Well, good morning, everyone. It's day two of the deep, sexy, hay allergy voice. We are back out at, at the, uh, sweet Jesus, I'm so tired I can't even talk. So, quick update. The Airbnb I'm staying at doesn't have air conditioning. I know, that exists in 2021. Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, it does. And I'm staying at the Airbnb that has no air conditioning. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I told you yesterday it was 100 degrees, which means inside our Airbnb, it was hot as balls. Last night, it got down into the 70s around three o'clock in the morning, hot as balls, which means we all slept like garbage. I'm sorry, I'm tired. So anyway, we're back out here on Carson's job. And we've made a fair amount of progress. As you guys know, we finished the retention pond way back there. We finished that yesterday. And now we've moved up to the retention bond behind me here in the front of the sub. So the plan for today is we are going to, sorry, let me, let me shuffle my hands and make you guys all dizzy. Sorry. Um, so the plan is we're going to start working pretty hardcore on this. I'm going to take the haul trucks and the quad truck or the uh, quad axle, the dump truck, that truck that hauls dirt, you know, that one, that's, that's the one. I'm gonna take them back to the back of the sub and I'm gonna start working all of the boulevards coming out. And the reason I'm doing that, I wanna be really close on material so that we don't have to mess with any more hauling. Yes, we're gonna screw up the boulevards when we go do pipe work, but at least the material will all be in place. So I'm gonna go do that this morning. Also, we have rain coming uh, for sure. We looked at the radar. I, I was hoping it was gonna hold off to like three or four so we could get a really solid day in. Um, before it cut us off. But we looked at the radar and it's like halfway across the state right now, kind of slowly marching. I'm still hopeful that it'll hold off till at least two, but who knows? So we're gonna go back and part of the reason I'm prepping the boulevards is because I want everything to be able to drain and we've got a lot of ruts from where the trucks have been running. So we're gonna fill those and, uh, and work our way up to the front of the sub. And like we talked about yesterday, I've got this starting to take shape now so that Colton and Ryan can see it so they can use the big machines to bulk that in while I use the GPS to do the boulevards. Although I may flip Ryan over to boulevards so I can keep cutting with Colton up here just because I do have the GPS and there's kind of some weird shapes going on with the slopes. So yeah, that's the plan. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a mad dash to beat the rain today and get enough production in that we can justify not working tomorrow because with all the rain we might be getting, tomorrow's a wash for the most part. We make them piddle around, but it ain't gonna be anything productive. So anyway, I'm gonna go fire up the machine, fuel up, grease up, and I'll catch you in the dozer. We'll see you in a bit. Well guys, I thought I would give you a quick update of where we're at. Uh, I haven't been recording because quite honestly, I'm spending the majority of my time just hanging out, kind of dressing up some small areas and waiting for the quad axle to dump loads for me but basically you can see our boulevard here got it nice and slicked off we got a two percent grade towards the road and i've been able to cut it close enough to the road that most of the spoils have fallen off and if we get a big enough rain it will actually push the rest of those spoils off and allow it to drain so that this boulevard will be usable you're asking why am i concerned about the boulevard it's because that's our really only flat access around this site right now all the way around and we are going to have to get trucks through here periodically the skid steer bring in pipe we need to keep it flat and usable so the boulevard with rain coming this afternoon has been our concern so that's kind of where we're at and what we're doing uh, i've only got to go another i don't know 100 to 150 yards probably right around that bend is where we get back into where we finished off yesterday and i know that area is all good so I think I'll be on this for probably another 45 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, probably 45 minutes to an hour. And then we'll flip back up front. So I'm sorry I have not been recording, but you guys would be as bored as I am. I'm literally bored. I've been kind of tidying things up as I go along the edge of the road and stuff like that, but there's not a whole heck of a lot to do while I'm waiting on this truck. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, I just got the drone up in the air. We are done with our boulevards. Woo. Now we're going to come over here and start making a mess in this pond. 
and I figured I'd catch you guys as I start in on this because I got a fair amount of cleanup work to do. And that'll let you guys see that. Plus, you can kind of witness our whole operation. So we're hauling spoils to the big fill area now. Um, I'm going to clean this up for the trucks. This is turning into a bit of a disaster here. At least for that quad. So we'll do a couple little passes here and just dress it up a little bit. So yeah, we got a fair amount of tidy up. That's why I threw the camera on is because you guys will kind of see when I get into a bombed out area, kind of my procedure for cleaning up and shaping and hollowing and you know, all that good stuff. Boy, I don't like seeing that hoe not swinging. We got each one of those trucks is 150 an hour, plus whatever their quad is. I'm sure that's all a 70 plus an hour. So you're almost $400 an hour with all these trucks rolling. For that hoe to be just sitting, that's expensive. Now we will gently step our way down here. Bonk. All right, now we can get back into our GPS. And so I'm just gonna ride this ridge. So let's see here, we're right on a hip point. So I'm gonna stay on the high side of that hip. Whoop. Maybe if my GPS will kick in and let me. Oh, that's right, I had to freehand this because this was actually, I remember now, this is a pretty steep slope to the point that I think it's a bit ridiculous the way they've got it programmed. So I am free handing this little top part of the hip and then we will go with the autos on as we round the corner here. 
and I'm kind of I'm watching my blade right now for the most part because I'm freehanding but I'm also keeping an eye on my GPS screen because around this corner we get back into a reasonable grade and right there there's the autos and you can see how we kind of caught that as we came across like I talked about in one of my down and dirties, click up here for the link to it. Uh, having GPS does not make you an amazing dozer operator. You still have to know how to run the machine. You still got to be able to freehand. You still got to be able to run a dozer. And so what I'm going to do here. This is where we get into our tip selection. I'm going to go and change our focus to my blade tip and I'm going to keep it on, oh, I had it on the right one. So we're going to keep it on the right side so I can follow this ridge up top here. And if my blade goes over the hit point, I don't want it to flip over. Boy, they want me to cut deep there, aren't they? And I still got to go forward another. Ooh, baby. Uh, well that kind of sucks. I really don't want to take that silt fence out. I don't know. We may, we may see if they'll let us get away with shaping it to the silt fence. Otherwise, we're going to have to get some guys out here to replace that silt fence. There ain't no other way around it. So I should probably tell you guys how I'm, you know, planning on shaping this, shouldn't I? So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to start on the high side and work everything down into the bowl. Because we've talked about this before, but dozers push most efficiently downhill because you not only have the weight of, of, let me rephrase that. You're not just pushing the weight of the dirt with the blade and the power of the machine. You have the weight of the machine carrying the weight downhill. So if we can work everything going down our slope, we will be that much more productive. We're going to end that cut right there. You can swing around and get that in a second. And so now we're going to come back and we're going to carry this radius all the way around and just shape this nice, beautiful swale. And again, working all of our material down into the hole. And now I'm going to change my blade tip here. And yes, we're going to call that good. There's our autos kicking in. And now I am going to zoom in so I can actually see we're riding this line right here. That's the one we want to focus on. I'm getting away from it a little bit. It's okay though. Because we've got a good, I'm looking here to make sure my slope is consistent and I don't have another weird hip point that I have to worry about my blade flipping its angle. That's my big concern. And see how we're getting a little bit, see how our pitch changes. So I'm going to switch my blade tip. So I want to stay on the consistent grade over here don't want that angle to change. All right, we're starting to dig. Oh, nice, we got another pipe truck. Unfortunately, I have to bring my drone in because I have to call Ryan and tell him where to put that pipe. So I'm going to keep it this and we'll catch you guys here shortly. All right, guys, we've been at it for a couple more hours here. And we are back down in the pond. And uh, I am basically going to go ahead and cut this. All of our rain went away for this afternoon. So we have decided we're going to go full on for finish grade here in the retention pond 
And so that's what I'm cutting in right now. And I'm fighting clay as I do that. Come on, baby, push. I have figured out with this dozer, it will push substantially more, but you have got to creep. Um, and just let the traction, con traction control handle it. Um, it'll keep pushing, but I wish that traction control was a little more... Uh, a little more like the case where it was really handling the traction control. Instead, I'm finding that I'm the one that has to handle the traction control. <clears throat> if that makes sense. Like I said in those videos with the case, which if you haven't seen that whole vlog series, click up here. But that case, when that load management system kicked in, uh, it would just on its own it would bog that machine or slow the tracks not bog the machine it would slow the tracks and then uh, you would get no track slippage you just start pushing and with this machine you still got a substantial amount of track slipping <clears throat> it is pretty interesting though we've hit a vein of red sand I don't think I've ever seen red sand before. Not like this. So there's grade. We dip. Oh. Sorry. Sometimes it helps if you're a little smarter than the machine. I disengaged my automatics without realizing it. Alright. So let's try this again. Cut. Auto's engaged. Right here's our transition point, so the blade's gonna start coming up. We're gonna go slow so we don't overrun it. So there we go. There is the bottom of our retention pond. So we cut this deep in the middle, that way I can push downhill and really shape this without having too many issues other than the fact that I'm fighting clay the whole time. So I'm going to come over here and we'll shape over here, that way I can kind of notch out my corner and visually see where it all has to tie in, I'm not fighting it quite as much. So I'm going to get, like we talked about yesterday, I'm going to get square on this cut I don't even know why I engage my automatics. It's such a habit now. So I'm going to act like I'm slot dozing here. I'm going to cut right up against the edge and just whittle this clay back. So there's grade, believe it or not. Oh, she's... Whew. Can't get there yet. We haven't we haven't chunked out enough yet. And this clay is just freaking hard. Break it free. Come on. Break free. There we go. Bag gum, that's hard. Let's push that on out there. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to go back around. I'm going to push that up to the pile that will give my wall of clay relief that it can break free and I doubt this machine is going to be able to push this whole pile so I'm not even going to bother with the automatics here
I just saw one of the haul truck drivers get out and talk to the talk to Colton in the hull there. I'm really hoping he ain't broke down. He said something was kind of spraying in the cab. We were wondering if it was possibly a little leak in a coolant line going to like the heater core or something. I sure hope it ain't shutting them down because we got a haul material. We got a lot of dirt to move on this one. I did not I did not think this thing was going to be this deep. And the reason we're hogging out the, or grubbing out the brush back there is the retention pond actually goes another 15 feet that way. But the silt fence is in the way, and the silt fence is in the way because we couldn't get the brush out. So that is what Colton's working on right now. Although that's not really pressing at this moment because our guys that were going to move the silt fence have already come and gone, so. I don't know. Come on. Man, that clay. Even without there being much of an edge, that clay does not want to break free. Dang. Hey Ryan, what's going on? And that's how you do that with a drone controller flying in the air. That's how we do that. So anyway, back to it. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. We're close enough. I approach this is I want to rotate my blade to get semi in line with the face of this cut and that is how we will semi make this work for us something like that and I'll take my automatics off right about here because I can dial this in by hand once I get it cut in. Whew, that sand pocket's messing with me. I can get traction on one side, but not the other. We'll do the same thing over here. Try to stay reasonably in line with it. Take the automatics off. Whoop, they want to jump up that much. Something like that. Ta da! There's a perfect corner. I'm just kidding. It's far from perfect, but it works. Oh, baby. Easy there, GPS. Easy there, GPS. A little camera on the tripod was about to take off. Oh, there she is. Okay. We'll tidy this up here in just a second. I'm mostly concerned with getting these spoils out of here. Now we'll come back over here and dress her up a little bit. 
So now I'm looking to see if my blade is in line with my cut lines and we're going to make a nice clean pass down here into the bottom. And there we are starting to see the beginnings of the bottom of our retention pond. Just like that. And so what I'll continue to do is this edge over to the right. I'm going to continue to notch down just like I did this one. And what will happen is you will slowly, we will reveal the edge of the retention pond. And Colton will have, whoops, and Colton will have a really good idea of what this is supposed to look like. And he can continue cutting while I go work another area on the job. So I'll go dink around with this for another 20 or 30 minutes and clean it all up. And then I'm off to another section. So that being said, we'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, guys, it's the end of the day. Finally, we made it. The end of the week, we made it. <laughs> awesome. Um, so really quick, right in this area, sorry, should I level you guys out so you can see what's going on? Right over in this area, all day long, there has been this ballsy pigeon that literally you're four or five feet, I'm not exaggerating, you're four or five feet away from him in a machine, let alone walking, and he just kind of bows up at you like he's going to do something. He's like, what are you going to do about it? And he's been here all day. And it's funny because he kind of followed job site hours because as soon as the machine shut down, he leaves. Right when I pull the camera out to show you guys this ballsy pigeon, he takes off, so whatever. Oh, it's hot. It keeps telling us that it's gonna cool down and then it doesn't and it's hot. God, it's hot. So we've been digging all day in the pond. Sorry, point you at my face. With two trucks running all day. And we have a third of it knocked out. I'm gonna conservatively guess a third. And that's what we got. A big hole in the ground. And we're making it bigger over time. So that's cool. And then the cool thing about working with some young guys is you get to do all the silly stuff that you wanna do as an older guy, but you feel like you're too old to do it and people will judge you. So yeah, that's right. We, sorry, I'll point you at it. We park the equipment like that because we can and I'm on a job site with people who deem that acceptable I'm good with that so anyway let me get you away from the sun I don't know why I had an Irish accent for that it's been a long week guys I'm sorry I'm so I'm so tired it's just we're breaking into weird accents and we can't form words right and God help me if I try to record a camera segment segment without it just going to it took me three tries to record that one. I cannot believe it today. I was so irate in the cab. Anyway, end of the week. I'm gonna take some quick drone shots for you and then I'm gonna go home and enjoy the weekend with the kids. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend. All right guys, so I thought I would give you a little behind the scenes footage, a little little bonus cam for you so every night after I sign off and I'm like hey construction's awesome you should do it too because it's so fun after I do that a little bit now I have to spend you know five or ten minutes putting all my camera gear away and you know I just recorded my outro literally the job site's empty I'm the only one here because I record my outro and then I have to put all my shit away so yeah if you're thinking about becoming a construction youtuber you should add some time onto your paycheck or at least at least consider the fact that you're not getting paid for the time that you're staying late but i'm not complaining because i appreciate you guys i really do i appreciate you guys subscribing i appreciate you guys following along so without further ado guys we're gonna call this one you guys have a good night